everybody, it is Megan with Classic Cakes and today we are going to do a palette knife flower design um, with buttercream. So very cool design, very easy um, technique to play with and um, you guys actually voted on this. I posted four pictures and you guys vote on which ones um, were you guys were most excited about doing. So I'm really excited to be able to show you guys this technique. Also, I um, have never actually done it before, which is very exciting for me. Um, I am just pulling up the feed here so I can see comments. Um, the cool thing is I posted four pictures on there for people to vote on. I was secretly hoping that everybody would pick this one um, because I have not been able to do it before. Um, one of the, I guess, disadvantages of being on the management side of things here at the shop is that I don't always get to play with the cakes. So um, sometimes efficiency becomes more valuable and so uh, whoever is good at it or fast at it ends up getting those cakes. And so I chatted with the girl who did the cake in the picture real quick today and she gave me some pointers. So I'm really excited to um, see how well we can do with this today and learn this together. Um, I have my picture pulled up here. I have comments, I think happening on Facebook, which is having trouble loading, so I can see any of your comments, and then we'll move you out of the way. Awesome, so super excited about today. I'm loving doing um, Terry Towner Super Pump for this one. Terry, <laughs> hey Kim, glad you're on here. Um, my husband always, before I leave the house, to come back to do this. Hey Karen. Um, gives me I get nervous about doing these very nervous and so he always gives me like a little positive thing to think about and um, today it was that Terry Tano would be there so <laughs> um, Terry thank you for being an awesome fan and uh, joining us on this very strange journey that we are on right now so some things that I want to share with you guys before we get started on the cake um, was super excited to see that we hit 27,000 followers on Facebook today. So very cool. Thank you all. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Um, all of that stuff helps boost us so that more people can see us and hear what we're talking about. So thank you so much. Throw me some hearts if you think 27,000 is amazing. Uh, Katie, hey, thanks for joining us today. I love this. I love seeing the hearts pop up. Um, if you are watching live, then comment. Ask questions. There's not too much to say. Um, I love the comments. I love the hearts. It really boosts my morale and makes me feel good about being able to provide this content for you guys. It also um, reminds me that it's working because we've had some technical issues, so I love it. Thank you. Please throw me the love it. Love it, the flood of hearts. Um, I am going to do a drawing today for a $20 gift card. So every comment gets you an entry, so comment away, and then tonight I will draw the winner. Um, so text, tag your friends, get them on here tonight so uh, they can be entered in the drawing as well. All they have to do is one comment. Every comment gets you an entry. Holly says, I'm just starting with decorating and love watching your videos. Thank you so much, Holly. That's awesome. Um, today, this is a new technique for me, so we're going to be learning together. So very cool. Um, but I love that you're starting with decorating. It's such a fun thing to do and it's something that you will never be done learning. After 10 years of cake decorating, I'm still learning stuff all the time. Um, and I think that's really special. It makes it captivating to have a passion in the field like that. So, um, super excited for an announcement today. I'm going to get you in just a second. I actually have two very exciting announcement, announcements. Um, but first, some housekeeping stuff here at Classic Cakes. Um, we are going to be closing next week only um, just to give our staff a little bit of a break before May hits um, and Mother's Day and graduation cakes and whatever else comes. Um, it's been very challenging to continue working um, with our small staff and, you know, I feel like it's just a hard time to be a human right now anyway. If you're stuck at home, it's hard. If you're working, it's hard no matter what you're doing. It's just hard. There's a lot of uncertainty and fear and um, worry about family members and friends and people who are far away and people who are close that you can't be with. So um, we've just decided that a little break for our staff 
And um, so if you've already placed an order for next week, do not worry, we are taking care of you. I will be here to meet you so you can pick up your cakes. Um, we're just gonna limit what we have and take a little bit of a break next week so that we can go all out for Mother's Day. We're super excited. We've got lots of orders pouring in already. Um, so make sure if you want a Mother's Day cake, you get your order in. Send us an email, cake at classiccakescarmel.com and we will totally take care of you. Let's see what we have here. Katie, I'm still not great at decorating and I have been doing it for a few years. Katie, I will tell you, it is a lot easier to learn when you're working in a shop like this because of the volume. So I feel like it's not number of years or hours, it's number of cakes. So the more cakes you do, the better you'll get. And there's videos like the tutorials we're doing and there's all kinds of YouTube that's filled with tutorials on everything you could ever possibly want to learn for cake decorating. So um, keep playing, keep learning. Um, one of my best tips for a decorator who's getting started and really wanting to develop a skill is to sit down on the couch with a, a cake board or a pan and practice writing over and over again on it. Practice doing your flowers over and over again while you're doing something like watching TV. It doesn't have to be perfect, but when you build that muscle memory with your hands, um, you don't have to overthink every little step. It makes it so much easier to decorate. So play and practice, practice, practice. David, thank you. Employee wellness is very important. We, um, we're a very small team normally, but right now we're very, very small and uh, we're a family here. So we make sure that we are putting mental health and our families first whenever we can. Let's see. Katie, yep, nothing easy. Terry Towner. Terry Towner, does your mom want chocolate or black velvet? Have you had our black velvet yet? Because that is my favorite. The black velvet, ooh, lemon with raspberry filling, Kim, yes. The black velvet is a chocolate pound cake with chocolate chips with our chocolate truffle ganache filling mixed into the batter and then just a little bit of coffee. It's like super decadent, um, over the top chocolate. If you're wanting to have an indulgent chocolate cake, that is your chocolate cake. And the best thing about it is super chocolatey and super moist, no dry chocolate cake. All right. Holly, yes, make a Mother's Day cake. That's amazing, I love it. This design may be a perfect one for you to play with. It's floral um, and it's very easy to play with and just kind of fiddle and, and make it however you want it to be. So we'll see how I do. Um, okay, other announcements. I've got two more announcements and then we're gonna get to decorating real quick. Um, um, the Riley Project. So have you been following our Riley Project? Throw me some hearts if you've been following it. We are um, we hit our goal thanks to all of the people who made donations, thanks to General Mills who donated ingredients, um, thanks to our rep with um, South Holland who connected us with General Mills to get those donations, thanks to McFarland who donated, um, and then thanks to individuals who donated um, to cover our supply costs that we were not able to get donated. So um, we are donating our time and you guys helped pitch in along with those amazing companies to donate the ingredients and we are going to make next week during our little break 3,000 cupcakes for the staff of Riley Children's Hospital. So we're super excited that we get to do such a big project. Um, we have never done 3,000 cupcakes so it's a little um, not overwhelming but exciting and there's a little uncertainty as far as like how are we going to fit all of them in our delivery van. So we're um, kind of playing it by ear on that part. We might have to make some trips, but I'm sure we can find a way to stack them safely. Um, so 3,000 cupcakes to Riley Children's Hospital um, at the end of next week. So we're super excited about that. So thank you for donating. We are still accepting more donations. You go to classiccakescarmel.com. So after this video, jump on our website, take a look, and um, we are gonna just continue making donation cakes for people working the front lines. Um, and people working in um, like first responders and support staff for um, our community right now. So thank you so much. Um, up until now we have donated 300 cupcakes and 30 cakes. Um, so we'll be adding 3,000 more cakes to it, or 3,000 more cupcakes to it next week. So thank you so much, that is so amazing. Um, and on a personal note, it is, kept me sane during this time to be able to focus on how we can be useful and spread joy and not worry about the business 
or you know all the scary stuff that I can't control. So thank you so much for participating and joining us and making it something special for us here. Um, and then the next thing I'm really excited to share with you guys, and then we will get started on our cake. Thursday, I'll be doing a very special live with a very special guest, um, 8 p.m. right here on Classic Cakes Facebook page. Um, we will be chatting and hanging out with Eileen McCone. Throw me some hearts. I'm super excited about this. Eileen McCone is the one who started Classic Cakes 25 years ago. She's been decorating cakes for 50 years. So we are gonna chat about classic cakes, about the history, about how she started, about the trends in the wedding and the cake industry um, over the past 50 years. So we will be on here tomorrow, no, tomorrow we're testing it secretly. We will be on here Thursday night, 8 p.m. Um, to chat and hang out, so very cool. All right, so to the cake. So this is the design we're going for. Let me throw this around here. If you did not already see it. So it is little palette knife flowers. And I have my little picture up here so I remember what it looks like. What I'm gonna do, and this is what I do for most of the time when I'm learning a new design, when I'm practicing something. Um, I will practice on the table or you um, or on like a cake board or a cake. Yeah, a cake board. Why did I think that wasn't what it was called? So, um, let me move this so I can't see myself. There we go. Um, so I'll practice on this before I do it on my cake so that I can figure out how I want it to look and then make it look right on the cake. The other thing that's really nice about this is our buttercream here is non-crusting buttercream. So it can sit out, you can fix it. You don't have to worry about um, mistakes nearly as much because you can go back and fix your mistakes. So if you have a buttercream that crusts, I definitely recommend trying one that does not. So you get a nice smooth um, texture. And so when you make mistakes, you can fix them. It's a lot more forgiving. Let's see, Terry Toner, the founding mother, Eileen McCone. I love it. Yes. Um, I'm super excited about that. So um, perfect for Mother's Day. I did not even think about that, but that is very special. The founding mother. I love it. We're going to do that. All right, so supplies. I have a cake and a turntable, which I will pull into view when I'm ready to do that. We have some colors here. I have some cool blues. So I have like light, medium, and like dark, dirty, navy kind of color. Um, and then I have some green, so like a medium and a lighter. So what you want, when I'm putting my flowers on the cake, I want my petals to have more than one color. I don't want them to be like all just solid blue. I want them to be like ranges of blue, so lights and highlights and dark tones. So I made a few shades of color here. I have my green, my lighter green in a bag. Um, we use paper parchment bags if you have not been watching our videos. Um, I love them because they're disposable and I don't have to wash anything. They work very well. Um, so we're going to make the stems of our flowers with this. Credit card, or in this count, a pharmacy discount card. Um, great for smoothing, for cleaning off my table, for scraping stuff off my cake when it's a mess and I need to redo it. Um, so any of these, like, credit cards they send you in the mail that they want to, you know, hook you, um, throw out the mail and then keep the card, throw it through the dishwasher and they work great for lots of cake decorating. And then this is our magic tool that we're going to use today. This is a pointy spatula. It is tapered or angled. Um, that keeps your hand away from the cake so it gives you a lot more control. And then nicely tapered here at the end rather than the rounded kind, so you guys can see the difference there. Um, so this is gonna give us our petals and our strokes. So very much similar to painting with like oil palette knife painting, we're just gonna do it in buttercream today. So like I said, we're gonna figure this out together and um, I'm gonna do it on this board first. So I'm gonna change the angle here so you can see my hands and how I'm working. And then once I feel like I have some idea what I'm doing, we'll put it on the cake. All right. Let's go. I'm gonna flip this around. Just join me while we look at the ceiling for a second. 
That's my laptop, that's not exciting. All right, so here we have a white piece of paper. All right, I love it. Thank you guys for your patience. I need to figure out how to have like two cameras going, but um, that's quite intimidating to even think that far out, so. For now, this is what we're gonna do. Beautiful, it works. Technology. Okay, so I just have a mouse for my keyboard. I just have a cake board here and I'm gonna start with, let's just start with my light blue. And the one thing the girl did tell me for her tip, I talked to Courtney today who did the cake in the picture. Um, she is quite a talented artist and also does a lot of painting. Um, so she said that she likes to actually like smooth the buttercream on the table, which I did sanitize so that you don't have rough edges, so that you have nice smooth round edges. So let's see if that works. And then you can take it and you have like a little cut of the color. This reminds me of Bob Ross. I don't remember what he said. He had a roll on his palette knife. Let's just take a roll. I don't know if that's too much or not enough, I don't know. So flowers. So we wanna push lightly. So on the cake, we want to push that hard because it kind of pushes into the buttercream, but on the paper, it's not going to work that well. So it won't be exactly the same, but this gives me an idea of my shape. Okay, there we go. So I need more buttercream than I thought I needed. Can I clean it up? Okay, so I have a general shape. Now let's take some other color. So I've got the light blue. Here's my medium blue. And let's just cut some of this in here. And we're just gonna layer petals. I like these blues. So the way I made these blues, um, I like to start with my darkest color and I make more than I need. And then I will take a little bit of this and mix it with white to make this and a little bit of this to mix it with white to make this. I think I get the shape. I just have to make them look neater. It's not, I need to make this look more like it's opening. So let's see. I'm gonna take a parchment bag and I'm gonna make my little center. It does look like a butterfly wing. It looks a little bit too much like paint and not enough. Like I don't have my clear petals, so. Clear, like, it looks like there's too much stuff happening. So then I would do this. What I like to do when I'm learning a new technique is I like to just commit. So like, no, this is not right and this isn't what I want it to look like. But I'm just gonna make one and then see where I need to learn. Okay, so some thoughts that I have. I want to have some kind of little, like, here's where the flower meets the stem. And I want more defined petals, because I feel like that's more of... It looks more like a splatter than a flower. So let's try and mix some of these colors together. So I have a little bit of everything on here. 
and we'll see if I can just do this in fewer petals. Okay, so I'm also learning that I need my color down towards the bottom more. I feel like it looks neater, but I don't have... The specific petals that I want. That looks better. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so mixing the colors together looks better than putting them on one at a time. And then thicker, more intentional petals. And also I like this like rounded part here. And I just want a little bit of a bump down so that I have something for like when you have a flower they have the little base at the bottom where like the petals cluster and then you'll have your stem so I want to have something there so that it looks more natural like a flower uh, a little more buttercream yes Terry why wouldn't a brush work um, a brush is going to give you brush lines in all these petals, and it's also going to be really difficult to push the buttercream off of the brush onto the cake. So this, the cake, the icing sticks better to this than it does this, whereas the brush is just going to get all up in the bristles. So let's try one more, and then we're going to try it on the cake. So I'm going to take a little bit of everybody. super tiny bit of this and I think just more buttercream I think I'm being too gentle or too careful about how little nope that's way too much I guess it just depends on the size of the flower I need more towards the tip this stuff doesn't really matter a whole lot oh we're totally gonna rock this you guys my brain gets it now. Okay. So again, I feel like the ends of my petals are a little bit difficult to make them the way that I want. I almost want to drag it opposite way. Let's see what happens. If I do that. I need to take a painting class. I wish I knew how to do this stuff. Like had more practice with this kind of stuff. Which is really why I'm so excited that you guys chose this one. No, I feel like it's I'm making it too wide. No, I like, so holding it like this and doing it this way makes it very wide. Um, so you wanna hold it like this and pull out this way to get the like, longer flowing petals okay so I think you know we started here and it's cute but it's not a flower maybe a butterfly wing I like that or just a weird splatter more flower shaped so I feel like I've got the flower shape and I've got the petal shapes here so let's try it on the cake I'm gonna leave my mess here um, so that I have access to it gonna move my colors here and I'm gonna flip you guys over so you can see what is happening I've got too much of a delay so I'm gonna have to flip you guys around so I can make sure you're in the screen all right, so can you see my, you can see the palette a little bit, but really it's important that we see the cake. All right, cool. You guys ready for this? I'm so ready for this. All right, so I have an already iced cake. It was chilled. Um, and what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take this credit card. 
Um, like I said, just smooth stick it in the sanitizer or um, dishwasher so that it's sanitary. And I'm just going to get all these little bumps off my cake. Make sure it's iced really perfect and neat so that there's nothing distracting from my beautiful design. And I'm just not really applying much pressure. Just very gently going around the edges of the cake. And this is a great way to quickly ice a cake and then just clean it up a little bit. I think you can use a hitch to paint on a cake covered with fondant. I know some people paint on their cakes. Do you mean a brush? A hitch. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm totally blanking unless you're talking about like the hitch to a car, which surely can't be what you mean. Okay, so I've got that. All right, so here we go. I'm actually nervous, you guys. Alright, so I'm going to be painting right here so you guys can see beautiful. I'm going to move my light blue over here so I have better reach. My little palette. Alright, so we're going to take a little bit of everybody. I've got my light blue. Let's do some medium and just a little line of my dark. So I've got a little bit of all the colors on here. And I have no idea, this feels like too much paint on here. Um, let's just take a little bit off. So I just took a little bit off so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, Casey, Cassie. Yes, we've done like the, let's see, how do I want to do this? Like the um, embroidery kind of flowers in buttercream. Oh my gosh, it looks like a flower, you guys. We're totally gonna rock this. So it is a little bit easier on buttercream because it doesn't, um, it is a little bit easier on the cake than on the table because it doesn't just disappear. It like smears into the cake. So I feel like I've got a flower. Give this little flower butt. See, and we want to make like a flower, a flower, a flower, a flower. And then we'll go back and we'll do the centers and the stems and the leaves. Square cakes, I love it. I could totally do some square cakes. Um, there are so many tricks to making a nice squared, like icing a nice smooth square edge. All right, so I've got my little roll on here. Let's make another one going this way. I'm just going to jump in. Oh gosh, it's happening. So not enough buttercream, but guys, it's just a cake. We can fix it. I think that's the coolest thing about cake decorating is like you're never done learning. There's always something new to try or to master and I want every cake order to go out perfect but when I'm learning and I'm practicing you guys it's just cake. I got a little piece of shortening there. So like this. My husband's just gonna eat this cake. He doesn't care what it looks like. So I feel like I've got weird gaps, but I've also lost, like I don't have as much of that like layering of color. So I'm gonna take some of the darker color, just a very tiny, tiny bit. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna press it through. So I don't have a, like a glob of the dark color, but I have some press through the flower. I think that looks beautiful. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple more because I feel like the more you do, the better you get. More practice, more your hand understands what's happening. All right, so again, nice big roll on here. Let's do one here. I'm just pressing petals out. This is a nice big one. Big mamma jamma. I don't like that roll. There we go. And I don't like that this guy's got like a roll here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. So I'm just going to press it back. Just gently pull it back. And like let it fade. Throw me some hearts if you think this is beautiful. I kind of love it. I'm surprised how comfortable I am. Throw some lighter color on there. Oh my gosh, each one is getting better. Okay, cool. I'm totally, by the end of this, I'm going to have a beautiful flower. Let's do an upside down one. I don't know if flowers can like droop and he's a heavy flower, so he's going to be drooping. Oh, see how different that is? That's hard to do. How do I get that angle? Okay, so I've got the base colors on here. Let's take some lighter. Ooh, doing the different angle. It's like my brain was just starting to understand the first angle. And now it doesn't like me anymore. So I got some of the darkest color on here. I'm going to press it through. So this is a more closed flower. There are no rules. Every flower is different. You can't tell me it's wrong. <laughs> Um, I do want to do that little flower butt. I do love my little flower butts. I kind of like it. Let's do one more and then we'll do some stems and some leaves and we'll see how we can fill it in to make the design look finished. Which really is where a lot of um, cakes are missing. You know, you want a little bit of negative space. Um, and it just depends on your style. So I've got a little roll. I'm doing a really tiny roll of just the medium. I want to see where my limits are as far as having too much or not enough on my knife. So definitely not enough. Let's take a little bit. One thing we do here too is if we have case cakes, that are already decorated cakes. So there's no order for them. People can come in and get them. Um, right now we still have that going on. It's just curbside pickup instead of coming in. Um, but what we are doing is if I've got a new design to learn, I'll practice on one of those. Because nobody can say it's wrong. It's not an order. As long as it turns out beautiful, it's right. All right, so I've got my lighter ones. I think I'm gonna like this one. Let's take some of the darker color, just a tiny bit on here. I'm just gonna press that through. Let's take a little bit more lighter one and cover up some of that. I think I love it, you guys. This could work with so many different kinds of flowers and so many different colors. There's my big flower butt. You've got a big flower butt. All right, let's see. I'm sorry, I was not watching comments. Let me scroll real quick and see where we're at. Holly loves how each flower is different. I love it. Yes, Holly says you can put a little spark on each flower. I love it. Terry, um, totally easy. I think this is an example of something that's easy to learn, difficult to master. So like these are good, I like these, but the Courtney, our decorator who did the original design, hers look masterful. 
So, I'm not there. But, I'm coming for you, Courtney. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that uh, we have such talented people on our staff here. It's hard to not be able to decorate as much as I used to. I miss getting to play and experiment and learn new things, but I will say I never feel like the customers, the clients, you guys are missing out because the best decorators are the ones decorating cakes. Okay, I like that one a lot. Let's give you a tiny flower, but You don't want your little flower bud. There we go. I like that one a lot. Oh, I've got space for one more. So look how we started. Okay, fine. It's got the right shape, but it doesn't look very natural and floral. And look, it already has more of a floral shape and better position of the petals and color range. I love it. We're learning so much today. I hope you guys are having fun watching me not know what I'm doing at all. I know that's not the point of a tutorial, but I was super excited to get to learn with you guys. And um, also, I think for new decorators, it's good to see that you're never done learning. It always takes practice. Practice makes progress. Perfection is not a real thing, especially in the art world. Oh, I'm pushing too hard and I'm cutting right into my buttercream. You'll hear that from most artists, honestly, that, I mean, even photographers, which I feel like get a brunt of, um, they get the disadvantage of everyone has a phone and a camera and people don't appreciate skillful photography like they used to. Um... So I think it's hard to talk about art sometimes, but it's everything. My three-year-old makes art. His grandma would totally buy that. Okay, so my first flower, let's just appreciate how we learn as we go. Um, Patricia, what city and state are you in? I love your site. Thank, thank you so much, Patricia. Um, we are in Carmel, Indiana in the U.S. for those out of the country, because we do have a lot of people. Um, and Lorraine from New Zealand, love it, thank you. Yeah, guys, throw me some comments, tell me where you're from, ask me some questions. Um, we are doing a contest. Um, I'm going to do a drawing for a $20 gift card. Um, and... That is for every entry, I'm sorry, every comment gets you an entry. So comment, comment, comment. So this is our first flower. I like that one. I think I like that one. This is my droopy one. I don't like that one so much. I like that one. Okay, I feel like we're doing all right. Not my favorite, I like this one. So I think I like the ones that have more of the darker so this is something I do when I decorate any cake. You spin your table around on your turntable and you decide what do you like, what don't you like. Every cake has a front, every cake has a back. We don't have to be ashamed of our back. I don't like the ones that don't have range in color, so I'm gonna add some more. That's better. See, this one just looks messy. Let's see if we can add a little. So I lightened it up, and now I can do some highlighting with my darkest color. Or low lighting, I guess. I like that better. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to get rid of this giant mess that I have in front of me here. And we're going to do green, and we're going to do the leaves and the stems and the wildness. So, um... This is something that you can do with all kinds of colors. Just think about what colors you're blending together when you do this. I recommend starting with colors like this that are really the same color, just lighter and darker shades of the same color. Um, 
So, the secret she taught me, she told me was, here's my lightest green. I'm going to cut this parchment bag. I love parchment bags. So very easy to use. Let me get my comments going up here. Kansas City, McCordsville, Indianapolis, Texas, Brownsburg, Avon. Love it. I love it, you guys. Throw me comments. Enter to win that gift card. Don't let someone else get it just because you didn't comment. All right, so we've got our beautiful flowers here. And I have them spaced out quite a lot. I like to have a little bit of negative space. It gives your eye somewhere to rest. Um, it also takes advantage of the area that you have, right? Your real estate that you have. So we're going to do some stems. And let me pull up this picture so I can see how she did these. Okay, just a few little stems. So she said that the way she did this was she piped these on and just drug it into the icing, which is normally a big no-no. So this is how she made it look like palette knife. Smeared it into the icing. So we're going to do this. This is more difficult than I thought it would be to, like, intentionally mess it up. And these just get loose stems here. Oh, did you see that little air bubble? When there's a little air bubble, it, like, the bag burps. Oh, this guy. He's my little droopy one, so he's going to get a stem going up. And over. Okay, so I have stems. Now I need leaves. So before I do that, I'm going to use my same palette knife. I'm just going to clean it off with my apron or with a rag so there's no blue on it. Let's see. I got a lot of comments. I just want to check in with you guys real quick. What flavor is the cake? This cake is black velvet with cream cheese filling. One of my absolute favorites. Shelbyville, hello. Very shades of purple. I love it. That would be gorgeous. Cincinnati, hello. Raina, you can totally do this. This is super easy. We have a bunch of videos that we've been doing. Terry, oh no, now I need to do flowers on top. Um, so you can go on our YouTube or our Facebook. I'm going to smear this so it matches just gently on the edge. Very, very light pressure, almost no pressure. This guy might be a little difficult. Varying degrees of smearing is good, I feel like. Just like with the petals, right? You don't want it all to be flat and the same. Very, very gentle pressure. All right, cool. So I got some stems. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry, guys. I'm missing all these amazing comments. Kristen, thank you for joining. Crystal says she's never tried this technique. Loves the colors. Yes, just bake a cake. Give it to your neighbor. You don't even have to eat it. Bake a cake, bake two, play. Just make some icing and just play on the table. It doesn't matter. Letitia Greenfield, hello. 12 years ago, you got your wedding cake here. That is so amazing. Thank you so much. Another Greenfield. Yes, Heidi, thank you for tagging Judy. Sandra, excellent question. She said, what kind of buttercream? 
Uh, Raina, you can totally watch um, the replay. I will definitely have it on here. What kind of buttercream are we using? This is a non-crusting American style buttercream. Um, let's do our leaves while I'm talking. So I'm gonna start with my dark color. No, I think I learned from my petals that I like starting with the light color and then adding the dark color in. So, here's my little, I don't know if you guys can see the table anymore. Here's my little scoop of light green. And the leaves are just fat petals, really. Let's see if I'm overly confident. Hey, look, a leaf. Oh, that made me look like I knew what I was doing. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right, let's do some leaves and then we'll go back in. Oop, see, I got overly confident. We'll go back in and add the darker low lighting to it. So just a, a decent roll on the very tip is all you need of your color. I feel like that's too much. There we go. I want a neat, neat little roll on the tip. Yeah, man. There's like a very precise amount that works on the palette and then it's so really playing with that amount and figuring out what works for you is going to be the the challenging part. But like I said, it's just cake. Just keep playing. Let's do one going this way. thing I like doing with flowers too is there's no like precision required so nobody can tell me that this has like too many or too few petals that's just that flower the wind blew off some extra petals it's perfect you know there's no magical answer or scientific answer for that matter these are what these flowers look like if you make them different, then that's what your flowers look like. Let's do, oh, I'm gonna risk it. Let's do, okay, I like it. Like Bob Ross, there are lots of happy accidents and we like them. Okay, very cool. So now we're gonna go back in and add some, I have this dark green. It's more of a medium green, but it's just darker than the lighter than one that we started with. So to make these colors, the blue, I started with royal blue, a little tiny, tiny bit of purple, and black. And I actually mixed a little tiny bit, um, nope, sorry, the blue, here's our beautiful blue, almost like a Cinderella-y kind of blue, just lighter and a little bit dirtier. Um, royal blue, purple, and a tiny bit of black. And I actually started with this color here. And then I continued to add um, black and blue and purple until I got it dark enough to this color I wanted. And then I just added a little bit of white to each of these other bowls and mixed a little bit of that darker color that I already had in there. So I just have lighter progression of that same color. And then for this green, I did um, leaf green, a tiny bit of orange, a tiny bit of yellow, um, a little bit of black, and some of that blue that I made. So it made it very like emeraldy, um, which I think is beautiful but a little bit dirty. So um, like to make sage, you're gonna add a little bit of black to it. And so it has that like undertone of emerald, but not quite emerald. So it's not bright. I don't want something bright with these flowers. So I'm just gonna go back in with less on my palette knife than what I was doing before, just a tiny bit and just press it in and add those dark light to this. 
I think I'm loving it. Oh, caught on my pin. And I like doing the like range, like some of these have darker petals, some of them have lighter. All right, let me catch up on these comments real quick. We'll do our centers. Katie got her wedding cake around 16 years ago. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Kristen, thank you so much. She said she loves the concept of painting on cake. Um, we did not come up with this comment, this concept by any means. Kristen, yes, I did a, um, a tutorial on color theory as well. Holly, yes, practice, I love it. Terry, yeah, we could do graduation cake with school colors. Um, with something like this, that would be super fun. Sandra says, I love this. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pause for a second here. I need to do this style more. I need to learn how to just be okay with how it ends up perfectionist here. So, yes, I love it. There needs to be some, some, so to be a really good decorator, you want some critical critique of your cake, right? There's lots of things that I wanna do differently. But you don't want that to stop you from making the next cake. So I'm going to make tiny little guys here. Those little critiques are going to make you a better decorator. They're going to give you things to work on and focus on. But there has to be some appreciation for what you accomplished. And I think the biggest thing that I had to learn was what I see as the decorator. And what you guys see right now, when you walk through it step by step, you see things differently than when someone just looks at the finished product. So like you and I are going to see all these little lines over here where I smeared things and messed up. I didn't quite like the way that it turned out. But... When someone just sees the cake, they're just going to see it from far away, right? They're just going to see the overall style of the cake, and they're going to love it. So learning to appreciate your cake for what it is is incredibly valuable. All right, so just some little bits in here. Make them just all a little bit different. Now let's talk about negative space real quick and um, finish up this guy. So you can do like some falling off petals, you can do some stems and leaves. I like my negative space, so I might fill this in a little bit in some spots, like let's say here. There's another little... random stem with his little cute leaves on him. Oh, I did it the opposite way. Now we're going to know if we like it better with the emerald first or the lighter color first. I don't like that petal, that leaf at all. So we can fill it in a little bit like this. I like to do very neutral so we can do like the little clusters that we did in here as well. And we can do both. We can do some like this and some like this so that it's not super busy, but you still have that effect. Or I can take a, like a red flower and I can like layer more flowers in around these guys. So it really is up to you as far as what you like to finish your cake off with. I'm also going to want to put a border on this guy. So let's do a little bead border. I like my default is to do a border the same color that the cake is iced in. I 
feel like it blends in a little bit better. It doesn't take over the design. If I do a cake like this and I do a border in blue, it's going to match. But then the border becomes the focal point, and that's not what I want. I want the flowers to be the focal point. I want the whatever else I'm putting on the cake to be the focal point. So my border is always a neutral, subtle background color. All right, cool. So we have a quick little border on here. Let's see. All right, so we have our little flower. I feel like I feel like we learned a lot, at least I did, on what um, the, the feel, the vibe of the palette knife needs to be. Um, I will say the biggest thing is you don't want to hold it like this. You want to hold it like delicately and lightly and then pull your flowers up. So definitely play with that. Um, the colors matter a lot. You want extreme colors. So I feel like making my medium color was almost a waste. I really only needed my darkest color and my lightest color to play off of each other because when they mix together, they make that medium color anyway. So I don't think I really need that. Um, I think those are probably my biggest things. If you watch the video, if you didn't watch the beginning, definitely watch the beginning. There's a lot of um, playing with the shape of the petals in the video. And then um, thank you so much for watching. I think this is so cool that I get to get on here and hang out with you guys and play with cake um, and just connect with you guys, especially during a time where um, we're all locked away and have no way to <laughs> really connect with people. Um, so thank you so much. And I want to just say every Tuesday we'll be on here, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, Tutorial Tuesdays, set an alarm in your phone, make sure to follow us. Um, Replays will be on YouTube and Facebook. If you have not already, please jump over to YouTube right after this. Classic Cakes Caramel, find us and um, subscribe to our channel. That way you will get the exclusive content that we're gonna be doing on YouTube as well, so you don't miss anything. And then Thursday, we will be on here just two days, 8 p.m. with Eileen McCone, the founder of Classic Cakes, talking, the mother of Classic Cakes, talking about the history of the shop, how she got started. Um, she's been decorating for 50 years. So we're gonna talk about trends over the past 50 years in cakes and weddings um, and all kinds of crazy stuff. If you were on live on Thursday, then you can um, ask comment yourself as well. So I will see you guys on Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me for Tutorial Tuesdays. This is Megan with Classic Cakes.